Hello, I'm Professor Dana Hacker, and today I'd like to talk to you about problem solving. Generally, there are two approaches to problem solving. The first is analytical, and the second is creative. Analytical problem solving is best for routine problems, things that you encounter on a regular basis or things that at least seem familiar to you. Creative problem solving, on the hand, other hand, is for times when you have no experience with the situation or it's something really strange and out of the ordinary. For this video, we're going to stick with analytical problem solving, and I'll save creative problem solving for another video. The first step in the analytical problem solving process is to define the problem. This step, unfortunately, is the one that people sometimes spend the least amount of time on. They don't really get a good idea of what the problem is that they're facing, which means that their solutions they generate don't usually work very well. So what can you do in order to make sure you've properly defined the problem? The first thing that you should do is bring in anyone you think is affected by that problem. Make sure that you get a really good idea about that problem from all different angles. If you just ask one person, you're going to get their perspective, and it might be a great perspective. But since it's only what they see, then there may be things that they're missing that someone else might see. So it's important to get many people involved in the definition of the problem. I also like to think of this step as a step in which you can either play doctor or detective. When it comes to playing doctor, what I'm talking about here is taking a look at the problem as if it's an illness and trying to diagnose what the cause of the illness is. So for example, if you have a cough, if you have a cough, there's some pretty benign reasons for that cough. Maybe you've got a cold. There's some slightly more severe um, causes such as influenza. And then there's some really serious ones like cancer. Lung cancer can be a really devastating diagnosis. However, all three of these cases, the first symptom might be a cough. And so when you go to the doctor, you don't want him to just prescribe you a cough suppressant. You want him to get at the root of the cause of your cough. So you know what treatment to take and to know what your prognosis is in the long term. The other way that you can think about this is playing detective. So in other words, looking at the problem as if it's a crime and you're trying to find the criminal. Who's responsible for this? Not that it's going to be an actual person rather than a situation, but it's important to think of this in terms of trying to figure out things such as motive, means, and opportunity. Now, of course, you're going to have to tweak those depending on what the situation is you're looking at, but what would you do if you were either a doctor or a detective? You would ask a lot of people questions. You would want to understand what it was you were seeing so that you could put together the cause of that. Another important thing here in the problem definition stage is not to get ahead of yourself and define the problem as a reworded form of a solution. In other words, you shouldn't assume you know what the solution is before you've properly defined the problem. The second step in the analytical problem solving process is to generate alternatives. In this step, you want to go back to all of those people you ask about the problem to help you understand it and define it, and you want to ask them what they think would be a good solution. Now, that doesn't mean that their solution is going to be perfect or that you'll find one solution that fits everything, but if you ask each of those people, they're going to understand their part of the problem and you can combine all those perspectives in order to generate a solution that will hopefully fix the problem. As you're going through and interviewing these folks and getting their input, it's a good idea to make sure you wait to evaluate their input or their proposed solutions until you've exhausted all possible solutions that you can think of. And again, these solutions should be focused on the defined problem. And so it's important that if people start straying off, you bring them back on topic and tell them, okay, what we're looking at is how to solve this particular problem. Let's stay with this and make sure our solutions are going to directly affect the problem that we have defined. Once you've done that and you've made a, a long list, or maybe not so long a list, but the most list that you can get for your, uh, your solutions, then the next step is to evaluate those solutions and to select one. So when it comes to evaluating, one of the first things that you need to do is you need to go through each of the solutions that you've proposed and verify that yes, this proposed solution is something that's related to directly when it comes to the problem definition. The next thing you want to look at is you want to look at what the potential long-term and short-term consequences are of that proposed solution. 
In some cases, people tend to focus only on the short term, and they don't think about the long-term consequences. It's important here to consider both. And if you consider the short-term or long-term potential consequences as unacceptable for any of the particular solutions that have been proposed, then it's important to go ahead and strike that potential solution from your list. Once you've gone through and evaluated that first level evaluation, the next thing that you should do is move on to evaluating those that are left. And you want to choose criteria to judge your optimal solution. So what is it that you are going to most want from the solution? What's the most important thing for you from this? And then you go through and you rank them. How important or ranking how the solution rates on your importance criteria. The next thing that you want to look at is you want to, as you're doing this, make sure you're giving adequate time to considering each of the potential solutions. In other words, you don't want to spend more time on one and less time on another. You want to try to make sure that you're adequately giving time to consider fully the solution. Another thing that you need to think about, in addition to the potential long-term and short-term consequences, are those unintended consequences. So things that you didn't really mean to happen, but happen as a byproduct of the solution. Unfortunately, sometimes those solutions end up, uh, solutions with unintended consequences end up actually making the situation worse. One of my favorite stories that kind of illustrates this point is the idea that there was a country at one point in time that was governed by the British that had a rat problem. And this rat problem was really terrible and it was making life miserable for everybody. And so what they did was the people in power offered a bounty on rat tails. So all you had to do was bring in a rat tail, show that you'd killed a rat, and then they would pay you for that. The hope was, of course, that they would reduce the rat population because people would be incentivized to go out and kill rats. What they didn't think about was that people might actually start breeding rats. So instead of getting fewer rats, they got more rats because people figured out if you actually bred the rats, there were more rat tails for you to take to get the bounty on. It's kind of a funny example, but I think it's a good one. Another thing I've had happen as a professor is I used to offer credit for participation if students would ask a question in class. The idea was trying to motivate students who weren't as comfortable talking in class to actually participate. Unfortunately, the unintended consequence was those good students who already were asking questions in class tried to ask more questions in class. And so they would ask questions that they already knew the answer to just so that they could get the points for asking a question. That made it really difficult for me to actually encourage those folks who were shy to ask questions because it actually increased the participation of the students who were actually already participating. So that was something that I hadn't thought about, but it was an unintended consequence. I've dealt with it since then in my classes, but it's something I definitely had to learn from. The next thing that you need to think about after unintended consequences is looking at the acceptability of your solution thinking about all the people who might be affected by not only the problem, but by the solution. So is this solution something that you can sell to other people? Is it something that they're going to accept? Not only do you have to think about acceptability, you also have to think about feasibility. So how likely is it or how realistic is it that you can actually implement this solution? If it's not feasible, then you need to go back to the drawing board and see which of the other solutions you've generated might be more realistic. Your chosen alternative should be explicitly stated and communicated. So once you've made your decision and decided what solution you want to try to implement, it's important that you make it clear that you've made a decision and what your decision was, and then make sure all those people who are going to be affected understand and know what your solution is. The next thing to think about is once you've implemented that, how are you going to actually measure your success? The way to measure whether or not you've been successful is if the solution actually fixed your problem. Now, sometimes when you implement a solution, there are things that we call unintended consequences. We normally think of those as something that we don't want to have or something that's negative, and I've already covered that. But the other side of that is something called a positive externality. Positive externalities are positive things that you didn't plan for that happen as a result of an action. So when you're looking at your proposed solution, 
Even if your solution has positive benefits, if it still doesn't fix the problem you defined, then it wasn't a good solution for that problem and you need to go back to the drawing board. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate your time and I hope you will like it, subscribe, and maybe pass it along to some of your friends. Thank you.